time of this service, we ask, O oh God, Holy Spirit, you are the teacher of truth, that you take the word of life and break it for us and teach us and let the word bear fruit in our lives. Amen. Father, in the first place, we thank you that the word is already bearing fruit. And Lord, we ask that that grace will be released over this house that will keep on bearing fruit by the word. And so shall we be your disciples in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let's go straight into the word. We ended our series on love last week. So we, we spoke on love for almost four weeks. We looked at the benefits we get from walking in love. We looked at practical steps we, uh, to love, practical steps to walk in love and grow in love. And finally, we looked at the hindrances to our love. What can hinder our love? But in summary, in all those uh, lessons or uh, series, in all those teachings, what I can simply tell you to summarize is where we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, that it has not entered the eye, the ears, or the heart of any man what God has prepared for them that love him. But as it is written, I had not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. No matter how big you can dream, no matter how big your faith is, no matter what, what you think you are believing God for, I will simply tell you that the plan of God for your life is always bigger than all those dreams, all those whatever you can believe, whatever you can think, oh, I'm believing God for this, this is big, this is unimaginable. The plan of God is always bigger. But you can only assess that plan through love. Praise the Lord. You can only assess that plan and the purpose of God for your life through your work of love. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20. The scripture says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. So God is able to do above all. So the point is that everything that you can think of, every faith that you can have, Every dream that you can dream, every imagination that you can imagine to believe God, God can exceed those dreams. But you can only assess that realm through your work of love. So that is why love is important. When you are showing love, it's not really a, a matter of the person that you are showing that love to yourself is more important. The love you are showing to another person is more beneficial to you yourself than the person you are. You may believe, okay, yes, I help the person, you help the person, but the benefit you yourself get is even more than what you have helped or the love you have shown. But now, God will not always give you those you know, plans at once. 
He will always give you step by step. So this is what I want us to go into maybe uh, today and, and next week. Sustaining the blessing. Sustaining the blessing. How do you sustain the blessing? Okay, we have talked about love and I believe that the grace and that you know, love has been ignited in our midst, in our lives, and we begin to walk in love, and we begin to experience the blessings and the fruits of love, how do we now sustain that blessing? How do you keep it? Because this is another important area that we need to look at. So many times we receive a blessing, or a breakthrough, and before we know it, we lose it. We come back to square one because we couldn't sustain it. We couldn't sustain it. How do we sustain that blessing? You know, I have, I have, like in this ministry now, this is almost our, this is our 11th year in the ministry and through these 11 years I have seen different kinds of people, different kinds of attitude, different kinds of behavior, you know, people of different background, different, and one thing that I have noticed that, you know, that's almost like a norm, which is not supposed to be, but this is, somebody can come to the church and the person, you know, is in need, he needs help, he needs assistance, he needs job, he needs prayer, he needs every encouragement, he needs every, anything, everything that he can get. And the person is very dedicated, very zealous, Sunday service is here, Wednesday service is here, corner VG is here, he's serving, he's zealous. And then the moment he gets the blessing that you are praying for, you don't see him again in church. And then you call him, oh, where are you, brother? Hey, I, I didn't see you again. He said, oh, pastor, you know, this Sunday is the only time I have to rest. I walk from Monday to Saturday, and I can only rest on Sunday. And gradually, 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 you don't see him again. I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot. It has happened a lot in this place. Well, I can understand that sometimes... There are blessings that will come that will put you in a fix, you know. There are, there are some jobs you may get that will not give you that opportunity and the time you had before. But at the same time, it should not take you away from the church. It should not take you away. Even if you don't come to Sunday service, there, should, there, is, there is still a way I know that, okay, even though this person didn't come to church, I know that he's still you know, his heart is still with us. And some other times, you find out that the person, after a while, loses the job. And then he comes back again. So, I believe that this teaching is very important and beneficial for us because when we do that, we are, we are limiting our growth. We are limiting where we could have. By the time you are losing that job and coming back again to start praying again, start believing God again, you would have gone further than where, where you, you are now. Praise the Lord. So I, I want to, you know, have this teaching so that we know how to sustain the blessing, sustain the breakthrough that we have received and thereby increase, thereby increase. Now, let me, let, let's go to Luke chapter 18 and verse 8. Luke chapter 18 verse 8, Jesus Christ, this is the parable of the, of the woman that, you know, that was persistent in prayer. But in verse 8, the, this is Jesus actually speaking. He said, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? 
shall he find faith on the earth. If you read the story of that woman, she had faith. She went to the judge, avenge me of my adversaries, and the judge said, no, go away. I'm not going to do anything for you. And the Bible says that the judge does not fear God and he does not fear man. So it's like just like a monster. He doesn't fear anything. So he can, do any, can take any decision that he, that he likes. And this woman had faith in God or faith in herself that she kept on going to the judge and the judge will say, go away. The next day she goes back. She kept on going, kept on going. That was faith. That was faith. And eventually the judge said, let me avenge this woman of adversaries lest she wearies me. And God is now saying, I will avenge them of their adversaries. I will answer their prayers. I will answer their, their faith. I will reward their services. But nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. In other words, for this woman, she had faith. Will that faith be seen in her life when she gets the, the result that she was praying for? It can also say, when the Son of Man cometh, well, when you get the result that you are believing God for, shall he find, shall, will you still be a prayerful person? Or are you just praying because you, 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 you need the result? Okay, we just finished the series on love, and somebody begins to love. I have told you that when you begin to love, you assess the plan, the, the, the big picture of the purpose of God for your life. Are you just loving because of that blessing you want to get? When that blessing comes, will you still keep on walking in love? When you get that answer, will you still keep on serving? When you get the result that you have been praying for, will you still keep on praying? Will you still keep on believing God? Will you still keep on doing what you were doing that brought the blessing? This is actually the, the main concern of God. God does not have any problem blessing you. God does not have any problem answering your prayers. But the question is, when I answer you, will you still be faithful? Or you will now you know, fly away and go to do your own thing. Let me say this that it is what you do with the blessing that God has given you that determines what God does next. Like I, like I said before, whatever thing you can dream, you can believe God, you can, you can think or you can ask God in prayer, God will exceed them. But God will not give you the, that big picture at once. He will answer you, the first time, and it is what you do with that first time that determines what God does next. So like the people, I know many people that are not part of this ministry anymore, not because of any problem, not because there was anything, but just because that they feel that they got what they wanted. And so they left. Now, that blessing that you think that you have received it's just a first step to what God can do in your life. It's just the first step. So if you think, oh, I have got the job that I'm looking for, and then you left, you shut the door to the next level. You shut the door to the next level. So what you have received now is just, is, is little compared to where God can take you. Praise the Lord. It is what you do with the blessing that it means what God does next. And actually, the blessing will reveal your true character. The blessing will reveal who you are. You can hide from me, you can hide from people, you can come to church and you are zealous, you are prayerful, you are loving, you are serving, and nobody can know who you are, actually, until that blessing comes. It is when you receive that blessing that we know exactly 
who you are. And that is why God will not give you all the big picture at once. For God, God knows who you are. But for you yourself, you don't even know who you are yourself. So God will prove to you this is who you are. Now, let's look at the story of Abraham from Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. Now, if you look at this, stay in verse 1. If you look at this place, God did tempt Abraham. How is God tempting Abraham? Why should God tempt Abraham? Doesn't God know who Abraham God knows who Abraham is. Even before Abraham was born, God knew him. But I believe that Abraham himself doesn't even know what he can do. He doesn't know his cap. You know, I was teaching in, in discipleship class sometime. I said, it's very easy to say what you can do when you are not in that situation. Like if I ask you now, if somebody comes now and slap you, what will you do? It's very easy to say, oh, I will, bl I will smile and say, bless you. I will forgive. <laughs> I mean, you can say that, but you yourself don't really know what you can do until the day you find yourself that somebody slaps you. Because when somebody slaps you, your brain will scatter. <laughs> you will not know. It is that impromptu action that you take that is actually who you are. So Abraham, he may say, okay, God, I, I trust you. If you give me one million crowns, I will give you a tithe of 100,000. I mean, it's easy to say it, but until one million crown enters your hand, now you begin to think, ha, uh, I have, I, I think I want to buy a house, and the house is 2.5. This one million is not even enough. He said, God, please, if you give me 2 point, if you give me 2.5, you have not fulfilled the promise of, of the first one. So it is what you do with the first blessing that determines what God does next. In the case of Abraham, remember from Genesis 12, God called him and blessed him. God called Abraham in Genesis 12 and said, I'm going to bless you. I will make you a blessing and you, you, you will be uh, through, through you. All the nations of the earth will be blessed. I will give you a son. I will all the blessings. And Abraham, actually, Abraham had started working in the blessing. It took almost 17 years for him to get the promised uh, child, Isaac. And so now Isaac is born. Look at God now tempting Abraham. Go, go to verse 2. And this is what God said to him. And he said, take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering, upon one of the mountains which I will tell you of. We know the story anyway, but Abraham proved himself faithful that he went to that mount that God has told him. In fact, if you read in the epistle of Paul, Apostle Paul tells us that in the mind of Abraham, Isaac was dead. He has, I mean, Isaac is already dead. It's just that in the story, we know that he was not, Abraham was about to kill him, but in his mind, he was not seeing Isaac as living again. He has killed him. And so God now spoke from heaven and said, okay, Abraham, hold on, hold on. I now know that you love me. In blessing, I will bless thee. Which blessing again is he talking about? He has blessed him in, in, in Genesis 12. Does it mean the blessing of Genesis 12 was not real? It was real. But now is another dimension. Now he, he steps into the next dimension of that blessing that God, you know, actually, actually what I understand from here is that this was where the blessing of Jesus was established. The blessing of Genesis 12 was the blessing of Isaac. God promised Abraham, a son, Isaac, not Jesus. But it was in Genesis 22 when Abraham proved himself faithful 
that that blessing of Jesus. So Jesus will now have to come from the loins of Abraham. Praise the Lord. In, in fact, if you look at the story, you know that Isaac was now, Isaac now became a type of Jesus. That the same way Isaac, you know, uh, was laid on that altar and sacrificed and then a lamb came and he used that lamb instead. So that is what Jesus Christ came to do for us. But it happened by the reason of the obedience of Abraham. So the point I want you to understand today is that what you do with the blessing God gives to you determines what God does next for you. If you get the first blessing and think, okay, I have received, you know, like for, for instance, we just finished the series on love and you begin to love and you begin to receive the blessings and the fruits of love. That is when we know, are you loving because you love God or are you loving because you need the rewards of blessing? We talk about giving and you start to give. It is when the rewards of giving comes that we know, are you giving because you love God? You want to serve God with your finances? Or are you giving because you want the breakthrough? So, so many people give because, okay, pastor has preached, if you give, God will bless you, sow a seed. And then you are sowing a seed, believing God for a job, believing God for this. And then when that job comes, you now stop sowing the seed because that shows that you are sowing was based or, you know, you are sowing because of the rewards and the blessing you will get, not actually because of the love for God. And that shuts the next level over you. But this morning, I pray that as we go through this series, that God will help us to come over that attitude in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That our love for God will be genuine Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That we will be able to assess all that God has for us Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Now, how do you sustain the blessing? How do you sustain the blessing? Number one, if you must sustain the blessing, you must be a person of character. I told us before that there were two things the Holy Spirit did on the life of Jesus. Number one is power, and number two is character. Many of us look only on the power aspect of it. You need anointing, you need the blessing, you need the gifts, you need, you know, all these things are, are the power aspect of the spirit. But how about the character? If you don't have the character, you cannot sustain the power. If you are not a person of character, you cannot sustain the blessing. I think it was Bishop T.D. Jakes that said that your gift can take you to a place where your character won't keep you. Your gift, your anointing, your, you know, your talents, it can take you to a height, but the, the problem is to remain on how do you maintain that height? How do you remain on that position? How do you keep that blessing? It is your character. It is your character. If you don't have the right character, you cannot keep the blessing too long. It will show. It will show. So if you must maintain the blessing, you must develop your character. We know the story of Samson in the Bible. Samson was one of the most anointed men, on, I should say, on earth. Not only in the, in the Old Testament. Most anointed. In the first place, his birth was, was prophesied. 
there were only very few people that their beds were prophesied. Samson, anointed man of God, very strong physically, not just in the, not just in the spirit, in the physic, naturally strong, but character flaws, character flaws, character flaws. He died shamefully. He couldn't sustain the anointing. He couldn't sustain the blessing because of character flaws. We know about King Saul. We know about King Saul. The Bible, in fact, the introduction, when, when King Saul was introduced the first time, you see a very tall, handsome, you know, young man. Physically, naturally handsome, strong, tall. He says taller than every other man in Israel. Anointed king, but character flaws. He could not sustain the kingdom. As a matter of fact, maybe, maybe when we say Jesus is the son of David, it would have been Jesus, the son of Saul. That could have been. Because as a matter of fact, God did not have an intention to choose another king after Saul. It was because of the fall of Saul that God now had to look for another king and found David. So David, because of character flaws, could not sustain the throne. But his, his charisma was the, one that, was the thing that took him there. They looked at him, they said, wow, this man is so handsome, so tall, so strong. But he couldn't sustain it. And if you look, if you, it, when I talk about character, it's not that you have to be perfect. It's not that you can't make mistakes. Because if you look at the life of Saul and look at the life of David, both of them made some grievous mistakes. Some mistakes that you and I cannot even make. But what was the difference? Whenever David made the mistakes, he lied and he said, oh God, forgive me. And Saul made a mistake. He started giving excuse. Excuse from one excuse to the other to defend the, the former excuse. He would tell another excuse to defend this one. He kept on making excuse. That was just the difference. Character is very, very important to sustain the blessing. Praise the Lord. I'm praying to God that as he blesses us in this house, he will grant us the grace to also develop our character. Amen. That when we go outside, people will see us and say, yes, this one is truly a child of God. That we are not just Christians in the church. We come to church, we sing, we pray, we speak in tongues, and then the moment we go after, you know, across the door, then we wear our old clothes again and talk like they talk outside, behave like they behave outside, and then people don't know actually what is the difference. So please, to be able to maintain the blessing develop your character. Develop your character. Be a woman and a man of character. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As I start to wind up, let me give you the second one. How to sustain the blessing. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. Are we there? Deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 18. I'll begin to wind up now. But thou shalt remember the Lord thy God for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth that he may establish his covenant which he swear unto thy fathers as it is this day. For every blessing God gives you, there is a purpose for that blessing. There is something that God intends to achieve in your life through that blessing. And you must be able to understand it because my small role 
of blessed memory tells us that when purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. If you don't know the purpose of a thing, you are bound to abuse that thing. So if you don't know the purpose of the blessing, you don't know the purpose of the, of the prosperity that God is bringing to you, you don't know the purpose of the gifts. You don't know the purpose of the job that God gave you. You don't know the purpose of any blessing or answer to prayer that you have received. You are bound to abuse it. There is a purpose that God has for every blessing he brings to you. And the scripture tells us the purpose. He said that he may establish his covenant. That he may establish his covenant. That he may establish his covenant. It is when you understand this purpose and begin to walk according to that purpose that God will trust you with the true riches. You see, in the case of Abraham that I mentioned, when God, when God you know, tested him, to see what Abraham was going to do with the blessing. If I give him this blessing, how, how is he going to use it? And Abraham proved faithful that this blessing, these promises that I have received, is only to establish the covenant of God, to establish the will of God, to establish the purpose of God in this land, in this nation, and in the lives of men. And that was only when God said, now you have passed the test. And let me tell you, you are going to face that same test in your life in one way or the other. It will come in one way or the other. Will you pass the test? Will God say to you, now I know that you love me. All the, all the tithes you have been given, you are not just giving it because you want the blessing, you are giving it because you love me. All the prayers you have been praying, you have been coming to church, you have been laboring, you have been serving, you are not just serving it or giving or praying or believing because you want the blessing, you are doing it because you love me and you want my covenant and my purpose to be established in this nation. That is when God opens the heavens over you for the next dimension. Shall we be on our feet? I just want, to, want you to talk to God. Father, grant me the grace. Like I spoke to you, you don't really know what you can do until you find yourself in that situation. And like I said, the test will come. But you don't know when it is coming. You don't know how it is coming. But Lord, grant me the grace that I will pass the test, that I will love you genuinely, not because of what I can get from you, not because of what you can give me, but because of who you are, because I love you. Grant me the grace that I will pass the test of purpose, that I will pass the test whenever it comes to me. Lord, this is my prayer this day. Go ahead and talk to God. I want to sustain this blessing. I want to sustain this blessing, Lord. Help me. Help me. Help me. I don't want to be like the others. They just get the blessing and they run away. And that is where the blessing stops. That is where it ends. But Lord, I want to know more of you. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. I want to know you more. More of you in my life. More of you. I want to know you more. And how can you know him more? by passing that test by living according to his purpose living according to his purpose just go ahead Oh, 
Amen.